to the New England Haunts Podcast. And a good day to you all. You are now listening to the first ever episode of the New England Haunts Podcast. My name is Josh, a.k.a. Halawoosh, and with me today is my adorable brother from another mother, <laughs> Noobs. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Thank you very much. How you doing today, sir? Uh, I'm doing great. That is a big great. It is. All right. So... Yes, you heard that right. This is a brand new podcast that is primarily focused on the haunted attraction community here in New England. Why? Because gosh darn it, why the hell not? Hey, language. Sorry. Uh, No, the real reason is that I feel there should be one. Uh, Every time I look, there's no real actual podcast just for the New England attractions. Uh, There's great ones about New England, like ghost stories and folklore and stuff like that. Uh, There's a handful of reviewers that record themselves talking about places every now and then, but nothing streaming on a podcast platform. Every once in a while, there's a show that interviews haunters from New England, but that's not the overall goal of their show. And some of these aren't even from New England. And and that's the other big part of why I wanted to do this. I, I... I don't know about everyone else, but I'm getting sick and tired of hearing everyone's assumption about New England. It's like, oh, you must go to Salem all the time. (laughs) Oh, oh, I bet all the haunts are about witches and chowder. It's like, like, no, Betty Sue, we aren't all about (laughs) witches up here. Most of us know that Salem is a freaking cesspool. And just because it's fun to say chowder doesn't mean we made a haunted house about it, okay? <laughs> but that would be amazing, now that I think about that. Ugh, I don't know, not sure about that. Nah, man, it'd be cool. They have, like, a clam creatures and, like, a fisherman in a rain jacket, like, over some steamy pots. <laughs> all right. You know, lobster traps with seaweed all over them. And uh, evil New England fishermen. That's a theme right there. I like that. Yeah. I mean, other than the clams, how would you make it about clam chowder? Uh, we could do like a cream monster <laughs> and like a butter monster. It has potatoes too. Oh yeah, a, a potato monster? Hey, this shit's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah. And we veered off track already. Look at that. Okay. Who am I to be talking about uh, haunts of New England? Well, uh, I started my haunt touring back in 2010. I usually visit around 20 haunts a season, sometimes more. The most I've done in a season is 39. Whoa. I know that's not a lot to some of these other haunt travelers, but I'm pretty sure that's a big number. Um... At this point of recording this podcast, I've been to 198 individual attractions, not including multiple visits. Uh, Visits, I've got 342. Uh, Within New England, I've been to 98 individual attractions since 2010, and half of those aren't even around anymore. The other 100 haunts that I've been to spawn all the way to Wisconsin, Louisville, North Carolina, and everywhere in between. I put in a good three seasons as a hayride scare actor at Witch's Woods in Westford, Massachusetts between 2001-2003. I went to Trans World in 2011. That was awesome. Uh, Hoping to go back one of these years. And before 2016, I didn't really make a great plan for what I was doing with all this haunt touring stuff. I'd post about it. I'd make a video, sort of, every now and then. So I joined the scarefactor.com and wrote reviews for places I went to, or at least some of them. Uh, Did that for six seasons. Uh, Helped them with some graphic work, some video work, too. Um, I was getting much better at the video stuff, and it was torture on me. And I'm not exaggerating at all. From mid-September to the first or second week in November, I was doing one of three things. 
working, going through a haunted house, or writing about a haunted house. And there was no time for anything else. I barely slept. I was up till like 2.30 a.m. every day. But that's a me problem, really. Uh, some people can write these things in their sleep. I struggle with it every day. And they have some pretty strict guidelines too. Uh, fair, but strict. I don't think people realize how serious the whole thing is. And by October, I had a baby boy and I knew committing myself to them like that again was just going to be impossible. I was lucky enough to even have a season and go to as many places as I did. Uh, but that's, but that's really all I did. Just went to them. And it feels like I have an obsession for finding all of these haunts, uh, all, all these haunted events in New England. In 2022 particularly, I don't know what it was, but it seemed like every single day I was discovering some little thing I've never heard of. And at some point, I'm going to have some kind of database that's goal is to have every attraction in these six states. Big ones, the small ones, home haunts, a few unique ones, all the past ones. We'll see, but that's something I'd really like to do. Even with the few great listing sites out there, right now, the scare factor is by far the best one. Uh, Halloween New England is really nice, but still nobody has everything. Not their fault, it's just that there's plenty of little places that don't even think about marketing or posting much of anything. You practically have to hunt them down. So, so that's me. Noobs. <laughs> yes. Who the hell are you? Uh, I'm noobs. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, What's your commitment to the uh, haunted attraction industry? Um, I also uh, have been, I mean, not as much as you. I enjoy haunts quite a bit. Um, I just haven't been to as many as you, obviously. I also worked in the haunt industry as an actor. I worked at Six Flags. Uh, Six Flags Scream Fest. Yeah. Fright Fest. Fright Fest! God damn it, that's Canopy Leak Park. Fuck. Um, I worked in uh, Six Flags New England's Fright Fest for mm -hmm. uh, multiple seasons. I actually worked for a small haunt in Destin, Florida. It was kind of like a non-profit, kind of like, uh, shit. Charity haunt? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was okay. a charity haunt at a Bass Pro Shop, actually. It was kind of unique. It was a small little thing. Uh, that was fun. And then I also worked at Six Flags Magic Mountain here in California for one season. Nice. So I have that experience. Um, I, I heard some recent news about the Magic Mountain out there. I guess they're celebrating their 50th. Oh, no, they're doing, they're doing a spring fling haunt. Really? In oh, April. I, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, you should look into that. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll have to check that out. I kind of have that perspective on the haunt industry as well as, you know, being an actor as well as going to these things. Um, Sweet. Yeah. So other than that, uh, I'm excited to get into this podcast, talk about some stuff out in New England where I previously, uh, you know, grew up there for a while and see what's going on out there. Because right now you're living in like su Southern California, right? Yes. Cool. And I can also been to some haunts out here too, give some perspective on what's going on on the West Coast out here as well. You can? Uh, I'll try to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, we're glad to have you here. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, the plan is to release an episode as often as possible. Uh, these first few will be talking about the individual haunts I visited in 2022. Uh, but we have a lot of ideas for different topics, maybe a couple interviews here and there, maybe some trips. We'll see what happens. Um, unfortunately, I did not go to any haunts in 2022. Um, what? I know. I wanted okay. to. I mean, unlike you, I don't really like going to these things by myself. Oh, I mean, come on. That's the best. <laughs> I mean, not that you probably like doing it, but... Like, no, I don't. I just have to. Yeah. I just don't have people that can commit. That's fine. I mean... You know, my wa my wife likes going, but she doesn't like it as much anymore. So I gotta, we do go to a home haunt out here every year. Mm. That's kind of easy, but the thing is, uh, is the lines really? Oh God, tell me so, about it. Yeah, but 
Um, I am going to try to go to something because this might be our last year out here. So I'm going to try to uh, check out a couple of places. Uh, there are so many the places big, out you know. there. Yeah. There are different style, most of them. But like, oh, man, there's stuff that they're, they're not high on my bucket list of haunts out there. But I mean, Halloween Horror Nights, obviously. Yeah. Um, Knott's Berry Farm is turning 50 this year. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Well, not Berry Farm, but the, the haunt um, itself is turning 50. Uh, you got 17th Door. You got Reign of Terror. Sinister Point. The L.A. Haunted Hayride. That's huge. Yeah. Delusion. Whatever the hell Delusion is, that looks like... I don't know. I don't even know if I can call that a haunt. Balboa Park. Whatever the hell Creep L.A. is. I don't know. Just crazy stuff i mean i'd like to probably check out more of the like i do want to check out the big like corporate ones like the horror nights and stuff but i'd like to see what like some of the what do you call them home ones small not ones, home ones, but family owned mom and pop yeah mom and pop okay. things out here so. yeah there's a lot yeah but you said that um you guys usually go to one called beware the dark realm yes but last year, I guess he partnered with two other home haunts, and they made Bones Gulch. Yeah, uh, we That's were gonna cool. go to that. This is, we were actually planning on going that, but it just I don't know fell through. So I don't, probably tr- if they do that again. Uh, we'll try to check that out. But um, all right, yeah. That, well, that's we're... enough about California. <laughs> Welcome to the New England Haunts podcast. Okay, <laughs> no, 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 that was fine. I think uh, one thing that I'd like to do here on almost every episode is do a little beer dedication. And today we might be talking about a couple haunts in Massachusetts. And one of my favorite breweries in Massachusetts is Stone Cow Brewery. Mm, Nice. mm, Down in Barrie, Massachusetts. And here, I think this is a relatively new one. This one's called New England Woodsman. Nice can, a bunch of trees, a little woodsman silhouette, the guy with an axe. It actually looks kind of creepy. Is that an IPA? It's a NIPA. A New England IPA? <laughs> yeah, New England IPA. <laughs> NIPA. <laughs> it's a NIPA. Yeah. How would you say that? N-E-I-P-A. NIPA? Uh, sure. I, th- I think it would just be NIPA. NIPA. The I would just make the E, right? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Let's crack it. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh, it smells good. Hang on. Sometimes they have a little writing on here. No, they got nothing. Hey, you got to pour that in the glass so we can see. Shut up with your freaking pouring in the glass bull crap. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Is it? And I don't even like IPAs. Oh, it's lemony. Most of them are. I know that. Tangy. Oh, that's smooth. Mmm. That was awesome. I haven't tried this one yet, so this is a surprise to me. Yeah. I gotta, yeah. I got to go there and check that place out next time. I'm it is there. a great place. Unbelievable how great the place is. Freaking, they do barbecue in the summer on uh, the weekends. They always got live bands playing. They got a big playground for the kids, big petting area because it because it actually is a working dairy farm too. Yeah, just out in the middle of the hills and oh, the place is awesome. I can't say enough great stuff about it. What's the closest haunt to this to brewery? Barry? To the brewery? Uh, that would probably have to be Thirteenth World Fright Park, which we will talk about on episode two. All right. All right. <laughs> so when you go to, what is it called again? Stone Cow Brewery. No, the haunt. Oh, 13th World Fright Park. So when you guys, if you ever check out 13th World Fright Park, make sure to stop by Stone Cow Brewery, grab some beer before, after. After. And maybe even drink some during the haunt. No, Why would you tell people? <laughs> stop it. Just stop it. All right, all right. All right, let's get back into this. Uh, well, so I figure since the next few episodes we'll talk about individual haunts, I'd like to talk a bit about how last season went and how home haunts are really becoming more accepted thing in the haunted uh, community. 
I just got to say that the haunt industry and community as a whole, super obviously getting much, much bigger and better. It really feels like the general people uh, are just accepting this haunted attraction stuff and it is becoming more mainstream. Like it just is the thing to do now. So on one hand, it kind of feels like the main mission for me has always been to change the narrative of haunted attractions for as many people as I could. And maybe that's happened. Maybe not. Maybe our generation just doesn't grow old as fast as previous ones do. I don't know. It is kind of cool to see like 60 something year old couples standing in line now for these things. Um, but on the other hand, it's not as easy to get into places. Everything is popular. Everything. It was hard enough back in the days when uh, you could just show up and get a ticket and wait in line. The line took forever. They still do. Uh, but now we are in this world where you pretty much have to buy a ticket online for a particular day and a particular time. And sometimes the haunt doesn't care which day or time. You can just buy a ticket and show up whenever. Um, some haunts leave a stack of like 50 tickets to purchase at the window. But those are gone in like the first few minutes of opening anyway. Uh, I guess we kind of have this pandemic to thank for all of that. All the haunts had to do it so they could limit the amount of guests uh, that were coming into the haunt and the waiting line and interacting with the ticket takers. Uh, but haunts really, really liked this new style, or at least the ones that weren't doing it before anyway. I remember hearing from a lot of them say that uh, they were extremely happy with it. Uh, I would have thought that they'd hate it because it was limited tickets. I still don't completely understand it, but a lot of haunts said that it got rid of all the drunk idiots who came out uh, at closing time, yeah. and all they did was make a mess of everything, and I guess that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, I can uh, relate with that. I mean, I, I, during my time, I didn't, like, get a lot of drunk people. Most, I mean, most of my haunt experience was at Six Flags, so you don't really... Right. I mean, they do have alcohol there, but you didn't get a ton of drunk people. But yeah, I can I can understand that. Yeah, it makes a little bit of sense. I just like I said, it'd be, it's still limited tickets. Everybody's reporting like record nights, right? But it's like, how can that be possible if you came from a an era when you could sell as many tickets as you wanted? Right. So I don't know. But I mean, some of these places are making so probably so much that they don't they can take that. A little bit of loss. If it even is a loss, yeah. Because, like you said, yeah, the, the ticket prices went up a little bit. I don't know. But yeah. everything's changing. It's okay, though. So back in 2020, since a lot of haunts chose not to have a season or they sold out of tickets before the start of the season, I had a few extra dates on my calendar that I would have to fill up with haunts that I usually go to, or bigger haunts anyway. I thought it was time to finally go visit a few of these home haunts I kept hearing about. And noobs, I gotta tell ya, if there was a year for home haunts, I would say it's definitely 2022. That was the year. They were everywhere. And they're getting cooler and more creative. It's awesome. And we could have social media to thank for that. Uh, a lot more people are posting uh, these houses that they drive by and some of these places get on the news because of how much internet attention they're all getting. Um, we probably have the pandemic to thank for that too, as weird as that sounds, because here's how I think it all went down. The pandemic hit, people got bored and lonely and stayed inside. People have been putting decoration stuff out in the yard all year because they'd go crazy if they didn't do something. You know, fall comes around and Home Depot has the freaking 12-foot skeleton up for sale. Um, people drive by and really like seeing all this stuff that they put out there. Halloween was the first decorative holiday that they could go crazy with. You know, it would have been 4th of July, but people were getting arrested for being proud of America at that time, so <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, Halloween was pretty much neutral out there, except for the few Karens. <laughs> Damn Karens. <laughs> Freaking unbelievable. So the 12-foot skeleton from Home Depot was cheap enough, easy to set up, made a big impression. It's not gory or anything. So all these new home decorators had a lot of fun with it. Uh, people were in bidding wars to get their hands on these things. Home Depot didn't make enough of them. Um, 
And now you see them everywhere. And these home haunters have fallen in love with this building up their yards because all these people would come by and look at their displays and thank them for doing it. Um, they see everyone smile. It's a special feeling. And these and these homes keep doing it every year now with more and more stuff that the Home Depots, the Lowe's, uh, maybe Granger, Menards, all department stores. Spirit Halloween, obviously, keeps keeps coming out with new and new stuff. Home Depot made another 12-foot thing in 2021, and it was the same concept, but it was a jack-o'-lantern head and like a chest that looks like it's burning on the inside. The rest of it is vine, arm, and legs, and... And it was called the Inferno Pumpkin Skeleton. <laughs> it was a terrible name. Terrible name. Um, it didn't sell as good as the skeleton, but probably second best, if anything. And then in 2022, they came out with a shorter one, but it was a werewolf. And they have a big spider, and they got a big dragon, they got a creepy uh, jack-in-the-box thing. All kinds of stuff. And this new stuff everywhere this year is fueling the home haunters to make their displays bigger and better. To a lot of them, it's more like they need to add more to the collection now. It's like it doesn't matter what Home Depot or anyone comes out with next. They'll buy it. You know, it was cool <laughs> about the skeleton. You might have seen this picture going around, but it's a photo of the skeleton hanging up lights, the Christmas lights. On yeah, the person's house. Have you exactly. seen that? Like exactly. People utilizing it for that's like what Christmas I mean. Like well. they just they loved it, and that was the other thing. They didn't want to take the damn thing down. Yeah, it's easy enough to take it down, but they just didn't want to do it. So that was a <laughs> creative use of it. That was pretty. Cool. Or they they dressed them up as like a turkey for Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> those are cool. So, what would you exactly call a home haunt? How would you define that? Well, the. Hmm. Uh, the few that I went to in 2022 were definitely home haunts. You walk through portions of their property. It's weird because, like I said before, everywhere is popular now. Uh, home haunts aren't selling tickets online. I've never been a fan of waiting in line or being around a bunch of people. Why I like haunted attractions, I, I don't know, because that's practically all you do. Um, but even these freaking home haunts, long lines, too many people. But it's because they've worked hard as hell to make something really, really cool. And uh, sure, they all could take a few notes from some of the pros on how to keep the lines moving. But still, one of the places I went to, I literally was the first in line an hour before they opened up. The, within a half an hour, there was already a line of like 50 people. It was crazy for someone's home decoration thing, you know? So were these places that you went to, were these like some of the more popular places around? Is that why the lines were so crazy? I I guess. I don't know. Um, there's no real great way to see how popular they really are. They don't advertise. Most of them only do an actual show for like a Friday and Saturday night, and that's it. And damn near all the attendees are neighbors or people who traveled from the next town over. The ones over here don't get as much attention as the Beware the Dark Realm one does. You know, they aren't that elaborate. Yeah. Um, some of these home haunts are getting big enough that I would call them a pro haunt. But when they still have all volunteers, cheap tickets, all the money goes to their local community in some way, shape or form still someone's personal property i still call them a home haunt i mean it was 2020 when i made that video of the halloween house display that the bates haunted yard did down in uh in rhode island and that made it to good morning america right you know that was national news you know along with a few other home haunts around the country and now on the national news it's not just talking about how cool a home haunt is it's about how some right. haunts are like causing problems. The home haunts. Oh, really? Yeah, there was uh, there was two home haunts in the country that I remember made national news because of just how much attention they were getting, and mostly it's because there is no parking. You know, some of these idiots don't care that they park in someone else's driveway or throw trash all over the place. You know, all over somebody else's lawn. Um, it's a real shame. Uh, fortunately, I haven't heard too much disrespectful stuff like that happening in New England. 
I'm sure it exists, but the few that I've gone to where you have to find a spot and like hike to the house, I can, I can see why people who live around there would be pissed, right. especially if it's for more than one or two nights. So what are the two that got in trouble? Uh, the home haunts? Yeah, there's, um, yeah. there was one in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, pretty sure it was called Nightmare on Reddick Street. The, this couple had been making a display for years, but just like most home haunters, uh, it, it kept getting bigger and bigger. And in 2022, they did a little like um, like old Western town display in their driveway, and people could walk into it a little bit. The rest of their yard had a bunch of stuff. But as the popularity grew, more and more people started showing up, and it may have gotten out of hand with just so many people showing up. And this seems to be one of those cases where the neighbors are just angry. There might not have been anyone damaging anything, but trying to get in and out of the neighborhood, that's the problem. You know, there, there's no doubt about that. So I can see the legitimacy there. The problem with that particular home haunt is that the neighbors have been complaining for years and it seems like nothing was ever done. The HOA of the area had to step up and... Uh, with all these violations that could be true, like temporary structures and hazards and stuff like that. But these home hunters are acting like the HOA is just out to get them and shut them down and everything. They started posting letters sent to them from the HOA on their Facebook page, calling them out for this crap. Uh, the HOA has its own lawyers attacking them. It's a mess. Uh, do you have... Do homeowners have to get, I mean, I guess it's depending on the size, but do they have to get any kind of permits, like, to run, do a home haunt? It depends on what exactly they want to do. Um, how much of a dick the city is, or town. Yeah, yeah, it could come down to, it comes down to that. It comes down to the street, for crying out loud. It's like, yeah. like, like, like this place, this place has an HOA. Not everybody does, not every neighborhood does. Yeah. Um, the, then there's so there's very 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 local politics and then the town people and then i mean yeah that's just how it works it all depends on i, I think the trick is you got to make friends with the town right <laughs> i think that's the big trick <clears throat> so these guys on this reddick street here they even do a christmas display with a santa claus and the kids can come up and take pictures with him and i want to say that was a fundraiser for something too uh, but the HOA shut that down after one night. That one I don't completely get because it didn't seem like there was nearly enough traffic at the Christmas mm -hmm. one. I might be wrong. So what kind of neighborhood is it? It's it's like um, it's like one of those little cluster neighborhoods. Like everyone has a small backyard, but barely any space in between the houses. So there really isn't anywhere for people to park there. I uh, no the the best you have is like two cars in front of each house. Right. You can't block the driveways. You can't block the hydrants. What about anywhere like around the house, like on any other side streets or in like a parking lot area? Uh, no, it's it's too busy of a street, the main street anyway. And even if there was a big parking lot somewhere, that's still a lot of foot traffic crossing over the road, and you would need permits and all that stuff for that for that to happen. Right. My thoughts, I feel, are just common sense. You know, let's look at this whole thing. You love making Halloween displays. People from all over are coming to see it. You've outgrown your limits. The people around you are all pissed off and they have the law on their side. You can't fight it. And even if you could, why the hell would you? Everyone that lives in that neighborhood used to be able to get to their house in one minute off the main road. And now it takes them like 20. You know, what if, what if somebody needed an ambulance? Right. What if somebody had an emergency? I I just don't understand why these people don't seem to be entertaining the thought of getting a safer location like practically every other hunt addict has done. That's usually what happens. You outgrow your home hunt and you try to go pro somewhere, you know? The thing with that, though, is the way I'm thinking is like a lot of home haunters do a home hunt just because it's less... I don't know, probably stressful and, you know, like once you go pro, it becomes more of like a business type thing. Yeah, I, but not necessarily pro, you know, they don't have to go that way. Yeah. They could if they wanted to, Right. 
Um, what else would it be if it's not a pro haunt or a home haunt? It could be like a community haunt. Uh, never heard of that. What is so? What does that entail, basically? Uh, it's like, like it could be just a really cool big display in front of a community building or, or inside a building, some town building they aren't using anymore, something at the fairgrounds, somewhere in the park, uh, somewhere in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. You could get some food trucks or something, raise a few bucks for the fire department or a church, something. I just don't get why they seem to be so against anything like that. I, I get what you're saying. It's it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. um, you're right. I'm not entirely sure, you know, what it would all take. I just feel like a simple phone call and a couple meetings with some people in your town or any other town that would, you know, would be enough. And if you really are passionate about this stuff, then a few meetings and some phone calls really shouldn't get in your way. Yeah, I get that, but the difference with like a pro haunt, like, okay, they have a, a home haunt right now, but they don't necessarily have enough to build pro haunt. They have to like, you know, put a lot more into it, mm -hmm. get it to pro level, you know? Most home haunts, yes. These guys, they said they have three storage containers full of stuff. Okay, so they're really, they're serious about this. <laughs> they, they could, yeah. And, um, and that's not uncommon for a lot of these bigger home haunts. Um, and it's all in the way you map it out. A crazy home hunter has a big collection, but they jam it all in, in their front lawn. You know, plenty of pro haunts, well, small time pro haunts have props scattered throughout but it's not like they're one foot away from each other like they are in the home haunt. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. And the other place I heard about was in Plainfield, Illinois. These guys call it the Infested Oaks, because I guess they're on Whispering Oaks Ave, I think. They also call themselves Horror Props on Facebook for some reason. I don't know what they're up to. These guys made national news because they made a Stranger Things-themed yard. A bunch of their own handmade props, though. Uh, these big black tentacle things coming up from the ground, the, the monsters, they had the grandfather clock from the third season, uh, the fourth season, I guess. And if you saw the fourth season, one of the scenes was that redhead girl in the show was getting possessed or something and her body was floating into the air. And they were able to make this girl body look like it was actually floating like 10 feet above their driveway. Was it like on a string, like kind of like an invisible wire type thing? It, yeah, it's a, it was a wire, but it was, uh, but it must be like a super, super thin wire because you can't see it on video at all. Yeah. And there was nothing above her. The, the wire was attached to like a light pole across the street and all the way to the corner of their house. Oh. Now this place is different. The complaints come from one person. And I think it was because people parked in their driveway and there may have been some trash. But they shut them down for like one night in the beginning of October. And then a giant amount of support came from everyone all over the country even. And the town didn't want to shut them down at all. They just said we want it to stay up just with a few restrictions. And they had a great year. Again though, I'd look for a safer place to do this. So what were the restrictions that they had to do? I'm not entirely sure. Um, it seemed like it was just some signs of where to park and to keep off the grass or something. Uh, the whole issue is that the town wanted this thing to keep going. Uh, the one in Omaha was like not too much local support, you know? The, um, uh, the Halloween season in Plainfield, which is near Joliet, the area around Joliet has, or had anyway, uh, two of the biggest haunts in the country. And it's still the Chicago area, which is like just carpet bombed with loud, intense, in your face type haunts. A Halloween in this area is like something everyone is on board with. So it's not difficult to see why this home haunt got a lot more support. So ne Nebraska doesn't have any, any haunts and the state, nah, but Omaha has like, let me see here, like eight, 
I only really hear about one out there. It's called Scary Acres. It's not that far from Reddick Street at all. It looks like it's 20 minutes down the street. I mean, eight sounds like a lot for one area. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's a good amount, so I could be wrong. Maybe they love Halloween down there. Uh, it's, it's definitely not on the level as Chicago area, though. Chicago has like two or three websites completely dedicated to the haunted attractions in the area. Right. Actually, that was another thing I saw. Looking up the one in Plainfield, I came across someone's map of all the home haunts they found in that area, and it was massive. And that seems to be a new trend, too, these little maps that people make for their areas. I came across like four in New England in 2022. And even if it's not maps, it's just people listing a bunch of home haunts to check out. You know, Rhode Island, for some reason, has a giant population of home haunts, particularly in like the southern Providence to Cranston and Warwick area. Every year, someone on the news sites makes a nice list of a bunch of home haunts to go check out. And even when I went to the Halloween display at Bates Haunted Yard, he even had a little sign posted up uh, that listed a few more home haunts in the area for everybody to check out. And then there's Haverhill, Massachusetts. Uh, they have their own Facebook page dedicated to all of the home haunts there. Look up Haverhill Haunts public page. And yes, it's spelled Haverhill. But this is New England, so we say Haverhill. <laughs> okay? Worcestershire. Yeah, exactly. Wooshta. 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 Where did, where did the R's go? <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> None of your freaking business. That's where they went. Yeah. <laughs> I like it when people think there's a ch in there. Yeah. Worcestershire. Where is that? <laughs> right? No, but it was actually named after Worcester, England. And over there, they actually they pronounce it Worcester. So we. Well, would you look at that? Yeah. Huh. What's your favorite mass hole town name? Mass hole town? What do you what do you yeah, mean by mass towns hole? towns that people think are wicked hard to pronounce? Oh God. I I've thought of this in the past. I'm trying to think of something right now. What about you? I uh, I think the most difficult one is Lester. Really. Uh, L E I C E S T E R. Looks like Lee Sister. Lee Sister. <laughs> it's Lester. <laughs> right. Sometimes I hear it Leaster, but. Lester. What the hell? There's too many E's in this word. Leicester. Leicester? Leicester. Leicester. I don't even know what sounds letters make anymore. Lester. Yep. Nailed it. Hold up. A second. I know someone named Lester and that's not how it's spelled. Why even have all these letters if you're not gonna use them, Massachusetts? Whatever. What about that lake? It's like the longest name in America. Oh, yeah, Lake, Lake Ch Chagogagaga. <laughs> wait, wait, let me find it. Wait, 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 I found, okay, yeah. Listen to this news clip. This is a real lake we have in Webster, Massachusetts. Webster, Massachusetts officials have agreed to correct spelling errors in road signs pointing to a lake with a 45-letter Native American name. Lake Chagagagag Man Chagag Agag Chabon Agung Gamag has one of the world's longest place names, and even some locals have given up and simply call it Lake Webster. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So Haverhill has a whole Facebook page. Worcester, someone made a big map for everyone else. Lemonster, Mass, the town recreational department, I think, has been making a map for the last few years. And they even put up signs around the town, and they call it Lemonster Fright Nights. And every time I see it, I freak out because I think it's a new haunt. But it's just a map. It's just an online map. Right. And I tried to go see some of them during the day, and they were... Not map worthy. Didn't even make sense. There's at least one, maybe two houses that go all out every Halloween in, in, in Lemonster. And this map didn't even have them on it. I, I don't know. Uh, but these little things, these little community things, like these maps and listings of people's homes, it's not even businesses. No one really is profiting from them, you know, except for a couple charities. So it's, it's just really something special. Yeah, that's nice. What do you think are some of the cooler ones in New England? Ooh. You know what? I'm going to think that one over. 
Let's take a quick break from all of this rambling crap and listen to some creepy ass music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Wastelands by Ross Bolton. Good stuff. Nice. If you want to check out more of Ross Budgens, uh, Budgens, B- Bugdens, Budgens, Bugdens. I'm gonna say Bugden. <laughs> nice. If you want to check out more of Ross Bugden's uh, work, you can find him on YouTube as at Ross Bugden. Nice. So you were asking me what home haunts I thought were the coolest ones in New England. Yeah. I don't think I could say one is above the rest. I'll name a few. Uh, but there's a lot of ones that are really cool in their own rights. And that's like asking me, what's the best haunted attraction? My answer is always, which haunted attraction do you want to be the best? Right. Do you want to be scared? Do you like a big carnival style? Yeah. Are you easily offended or grossed out? Right. How much time do you want to spend there? You, you can't yeah. pinpoint a best haunt or home haunt. Yeah. And funny how it, it usually comes down to which is scariest, and then people get too scared, and then they <laughs> hate the place. Of course. I will mention a few, though. Probably the most impressive designer we have is a guy in Marblehead, Massachusetts. His name is Thomas Saltzman. Saltzman. He's a custom architect. He makes some insane houses, like actual houses. Well, for the past, like, six years or so, he's been building these incredible structures in his driveway. I think he started with a big gorilla. The thing was almost as tall as his house. The year after that, he made a tall skeleton, but he wrapped a wireframe around it that looked like an old man walking. So it looked like a 15-foot tall walking ghost. It was really cool. Wow. He did a pirate ship you could walk into a spaceship you could walk into. He made the news a few years ago because he made a a giant dragon and the whole thing was laying on top of his garage and his neck stretched out and laid across his front door. And I remember seeing the eyes moving. The nose might have blown out smoke too. Wow. In 2022, he built a giant Egyptian snake goddess thing. The, The snake body wrapped all around his garage And the body and the head with that Egyptian crown thing looked like it was over two stories tall. Wow. And and the head moved left to right. It was so cool. So he built all this stuff? Yeah, the the guy is a a specialty custom architect. He can do some crazy stuff. But this is like his passion project for him. And it's just him too. That's what makes it even more incredible. If If you were to force me to come up with an answer for who was the coolest home haunt, i probably point at this guy. Wow. Um, But he's not? I didn't say that. (laughs) (laughs) I said he's probably the most impressive designer when it comes to home haunts. But then we have places like the haunted Holando Halloween Maze in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. 
an actual maze that has a bunch of individual areas all themed out like uh, like the spider webs or witches, the graveyard, a bunch of Home Depot stuff. And people come from all over to walk through it. It's like a super awesome, fun family thing for Halloween. It doesn't have actors. Everything is like PG. There's nothing else in New England like it, I think. And then there's ones that I still call home haunts, though they probably are right on the verge of a pro haunt, like Salisbury Woods in New Hampshire. You know, you go into the woods and there's a bunch of actors, a bunch of sets, really, really well done. Does that make it the best home haunt? I mean, I call it a home haunt, but I don't think I could include it in the running anymore. And uh, I guess I'll just keep going on with the other three home haunts I went to because they're all very different. The one I was most excited to go to last year was called Fitzy's Fright Fest in Newton, New Hampshire. I've heard people talking about this place for years. I think they started in 2000, but they weren't running it for the past few years because of COVID. And the local New Hampshire news station, uh, WMUR, puts out a viewer's choice poll every year for the best haunts in New Hampshire. And these guys kept getting into like the top five every year. It's like Fright Kingdom, Spooky World, Haunted Overload, Fritzy's Fright Fest. Wow. And that's saying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go, and I didn't really know what to expect either. And that's kind of one of the things that I like about these home haunts. Most of their media that they share is more like just kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. You know, not really what they do. So, yeah. so that just makes it more exciting for me. Yeah, sometimes that works, I guess. Yeah, um, not all the time, but still, it's easier to have an open mind, though, with places like this, because they aren't trying to have an ego. Right. You know, it's not like Fritzy's Fright Fest, the scariest haunt in all New England. <laughs> we won best runner-up in the haunted house, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like that. It's just a few pictures, mostly of them just having a good time with it, a lot of community support. A lot of home haunts around them supporting them and everyone going to each other's place. Just a big party, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and they collect donations for the American Cancer Society. And they had a pretty good crowd. It was a, it was a walkthrough in his backyard. It was a grim version of Wizard of Oz. And I think they did that theme before in a previous year and people seemed to really like it. Uh, but he's got a bunch of props out in his driveway and his big entrance gate with columns and gargoyles and all kinds of stuff. But I got to tell you, I came real close to leaving, though, I'll be honest. Oh, why? Because uh, the line was moving extra slow that night. <laughs> <laughs> there, there wasn't even that many people, but I swear I was waiting in line for like half an hour and I maybe moved about 10 feet. Damn. And, and the people in front of me weren't, wouldn't stop screaming at nothing. And the people behind me were all 50-year-olds that looked like they just got back from a round of darts. You know, <laughs> vodka in their freaking Dunkin' Donuts cup. One of them was this... Uh, I got to come up with a name for these ones. There, It's like... It's almost like dad jokes... But they're, like, insanely not funny. <laughs> yeah, like, even dad jokes are pretty freaking funny. These are not... No, I don't like them. Like, like uh, they're, they're the ones that'll point at the zombie actors and go, Hey, it looks like my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they look at a vampire anim animatronic, and it's like, If I give her my number, you think I got a shot? <laughs> oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, it's so bad. I, it's it's the laughing. It's the laughing at their own stupid crap that does it for me. You know, I just want to. I just wanted to snap, and I couldn't take it anymore. I got out of line. So you left because of that? No, I was, I was really thinking about it. Um, the vibe of the place wasn't really matching what I thought it would. Um, the the people in line obviously had a lot to do with that, but I was like. If I stay, I might be waiting in this line for like two hours, it feels like. Jeez. And I'm like walking up and down the road, trying to see behind the house to see if there's like anything 
feels like I really need to see this, you know, like through the woods and through neighbors' yards and stuff. Yeah. Because again, their Facebook photos don't show like what happens. That just that there's a group of a family and friends dressed up, you know, doing something out there. Mm-hmm. So you can go both ways with that. Do they do something so cool it's a secret? Or do they just never think about documenting the, the trail at all because it's not that exciting? Well, what do you what what is your thought about that like haunts that show a lot of the actual haunt like on social media and stuff? Uh I don't mind it. Yeah. I know I know there's a lot of them that kind of have this inherited rule if anything you know to like don't take pictures and don't show it and don't spend it you know i mean if anything the main reason why i want to go see a lot of these big name places is because i saw what they had to offer right you know yeah. um so it doesn't really bother me that much and, and you know it, it don't show the whole thing yeah you know, unless you change the place every year, you know, like yeah. do a walkthrough video or something because it's never going to happen again. You know, stuff like that. But like, even if you do show a video, I mean, some places might be like, well, if we show the video, people have no reason to go. But it, you don't get that experience of being inside of it. You know, I, I, I have yet to come across anybody that has said I wanted to go, but then I saw a video about it and now I know what's there. So why would I go? Right. You know? Yeah. The only times that would ever work is if you actually saw the video and you oh, that place sucks. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, then make it known, you know? Put it in the reviews so to let the owners know that, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Most owners are not going to react like that. What? Screw you, then. <laughs> I don't want your money. <laughs> but we got to move forward somehow, I suppose. Um, so, I, so I was trying to look through the trees and see what I could see, and I was trying to feel out at the moment and I couldn't really make a decision but as I was gawking at the decor decor if you will (laughs) uh, there was a guy in a shiny green skull mask and a monkey dude Uh, apparently his name is Bob and apparently he's a pretty big deal Um, and I and I just mentioned random haunted house enthusiast stuff and we were talking and the guy in the skull mask, I asked him, are, are you Fitzy? And, and it was. Uh, and I'm like, oh, hey, I'm Josh. I go by Hollow Woosh. And he goes, oh, yeah, I've seen some of your stuff. Um, so that was my in. <laughs> <laughs> so you, cut uh, the, you got to cut the line? Well, it's not like it's, it's not like he freaking pulled me. Oh, my God, it's Hollow Woosh. <laughs> no. no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> So I figured at that moment I wanted to make something for them. And in turn, I could skip the line and see the place in a way that I probably wouldn't get to see it if I had just walked through. So we'll be seeing a promo video of Fitzy's this year from me before the season. Nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Like, do you ever, like, try to talk to the owners if it's, like, a crazy line or something? Like, do you ever try to tell them, like, hey, I do... I do these reviews online yeah. and I go to a lot of places and not not usually only when I was offering them something right like a review or a video and I'm trying to think you know I, I want to say I've never ever been in the line and just snapped and went to the owner like I'll give you a review if you let me go through now <laughs> but I feel I actually did but uh it, it might have been a dream wow I I'm not sure. <laughs> what what I mean to say is no. <laughs> I don't I don't use my dumb status as a critic <laughs> for leverage to get into an attraction quicker. Well, I mean, it's such a dick thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean not I mean, you look at it this way like the smaller places, like not these crazy big places, but like if you're trying to hit a certain amount of places at a time like one person isn't going to make, like, I could see if you had a group of 10 people, but a lot of the times it's just you, one guy. Like, that's not going to totally yeah, affect the line, you know? You're, I guess you're, but to me, though, just, just personally, I feel like that's still a dick thing to do. Yeah. It's one person, you know? I, I don't even like letting people know I'm there. The big thing is I, I hate bothering them. Yeah. You know, they, they've got a million things to do. 
And the last thing I want them thinking about is here comes the fat prick who might influence <laughs> some people to not come if I don't give them a free shit. You know? Yeah, that's just, I, that's I hate feeling like that. I, I don't like that at all. And sometimes they might, that. like, oh, this reviewer guy's here, guys, step it up, you know, or something like that. Yeah, like, I hate that too. I don't want people doing that. You should be giving it 100% as much as you possibly can. Yeah. You know? And it's, this is the only time I have ever done something like this. But this is me making a promo vid for them, which they don't seem to have any to speak of, you know, in exchange for me skipping ahead in in the line. It's not even the price of a ticket because the place is free. You know, they take donations for the American Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. So that's as close to let me in because I'm on the internet as I've gotten, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. I'm on the yeah. internet, damn it. Because because they really don't have you know they got a, a ton of pictures there, but no real great video. Nothing that really pops out and like says check this place out. You know. Yeah. And that's fine. You know, if that's what they want, then that's fine. But I asked him if would he like something like that, and he was like, yeah, that'd be cool. So excited about that. Yeah. Um, do you like doing those for like smaller haunts that you like to like? put a little more focus on that feel like should get a little more uh awareness again only if they want it yeah i remember <laughs> i remember one time a haunt was asking me what i could do and like an asshole i'm like well how big do you want to be <laughs> 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 and i didn't really mean it like that i meant like you know like uh i i don't want to be the one responsible for making you way too popular, which usually causes problems. Yeah. Not that I thought my shit would <laughs> make them, <laughs> but it came out that way. But that's what I but, but that's what I go with now. It's like, are you comfortable with what you have now? Especially home haunts. Right. You know, they you know, part of the reason why they wouldn't want to go pro in the first place is because of how low key it is, you know? Yeah. Like there's one right down the street from me. And I asked him, would you ever want to go pro? And he instantly, no, <laughs> screw that. No, I like just working in my garage and just doing my thing. I get that, you know? Yeah. It's like, but at the same time, it's like, can I make like an awesome three minute epic killer video of your place and make everybody from the state come and want to see you because <sighs> it looks like it's bigger than it really is? Yeah. You know? No, I don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> But I guess to sort of answer your question, I mean, yeah, I would rather do videos for the smaller places that, you know, would would like more attention. Yeah. It feels more rewarding. That could even be, like, side thing, like, to, but you could, you could like, charge, like, places, like, to, to make videos, like, hype, like, ah. you know, videos, too, but. No, I, th I think just letting me go and see them. Is enough oh yeah that. i mean it, 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 i could make it a, a legit business if i really wanted to yeah but i'm still just a jerk with a iphone <laughs> you know no but you are good <laughs> and like final it, cut pro haunt, that's all i got you know especially the haunt stuff you like they could hire you know a film crew like like actually people that make you know yeah but you with your passion for the haunt industry you do these videos really well so like would come out probably better from someone like you you know not necessarily <laughs> it depends but... i mean really the stuff that i make is is just like clips of stuff that i took and stuff that other people took <laughs> yeah and then i mesh it in together into a freaking music video yeah and it's a cheap trick i mean i'll be freaking <laughs> humble as hell about it that's it's it's cheap okay yeah. The freaking the the music goes bum 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 bum, and you're just cutting different interesting <laughs> pieces of video when the bump bump goes off, you know. Right. And it's like, yeah, a lot of people will react to that and be like, "Oh, cool," but it's still cheap. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> yeah, you know. And if I can't come up with anything better than that, then no, I'm not going to charge anybody. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I'm just you saying know. it's could be something so uh fitzy's trail was pretty good especially because the whole thing stuck to a theme the dark evil wizard of oz so they had a dorothy as a creepy evil girl 
almost like a doll almost and uh, and you'd walk into some corn stalks and the scarecrow comes out the tin man had a bloody hole where his heart is supposed to be um, and he comes out with his axe it, it looks like he murdered somebody for the heart actually <laughs> nice. that's what it looks like uh, the lion was supposed to be there but he wasn't that night and they've got the witch they got the flying monkeys the munchkins everything wraps up with the wizard and he bursts out of this curtain thing come forward i am the great and powerful lord and welcome to the end of the red brick road come forward it was a lot of fun but this home hunt gets to use a whole backwoods area just like salisbury and again does that mean that it's better than the others it, it's a bonus so long as you use it right but I'm still never going to say the best. I love them all equally so long as you keep the spirit alive. And there's an amazing place in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. Um, I'm calling it the Oakland Ave Haunt, but I think he calls it the Oakland Ave Cemetery in Tewksbury Asylum. Um, the place was like a freaking myth to me. For years, I started hearing from random people that that know the area better than me they'd be like oh you like the haunted house stuff have you been to that one in Tewksbury it's really good and I'm like Tewksbury I've heard of one that was in that area like 20 years ago it was called the Livingston Street Terror I can't find any listing anywhere for anything else yeah but but these weren't haunt enthusiasts so I figured they just have their towns messed up or something but I start hearing it from more and more people over the years, and nobody can tell me where the hell this is, though. And there's no Facebook page, there's no Instagram, no nothing. And this year, I finally had enough of people bullshitting me around, and the best I could get was a couple street addresses to go check out yeah. and see if something cool was there. Um, the first few I drove to didn't look like super worthy, but they were nice. And then I went on to Oakland Ave and saw this house that was like, what? It's like as if the Halloween gods just opened up a Shamu tank full of Halloween props <laughs> and lights and poured it all over this guy's house. It was nuts. This was the place I waited in line for two hours long, like a freaking creep just standing out in front of this guy's house. <laughs> it was just an awesome display. And, uh, and his haunt went into his garage and out the back of his house through like a mudroom or something and then through his backyard all these little spaces but my god the amount of animatronics this guy has all of them working perfectly too I didn't get that and and they're all themed too like a like there was a haunted mansion style all of them closer together right. and there's a werewolf one out in the back all together uh the harvest scarecrows with pumpkins and apples and corn stalks style uh i'll never forget that they he had a, a clown section in his garage you don't walk through it. it it was in the garage but like right before you went into the mud room if you looked behind you there was this whole hallway just full of every creepy ass clown all moving and laughing and clowns don't usually bug me out that was insane they got me were they animatronics or were yeah they people? all of them oh, okay. all animatronics oh, okay it, you know it takes the guy three to four months to build all of this stuff and he accepts donations for the red cross so he has no social media presence at all for this None that I can find, dude. Not That's even crazy. in like, not even in like the little articles of like the check out these fun spooky Halloween decorations in the area. Yeah. These little <laughs> articles that they come out with. They they list like twenty homes in the entire county, and this guy didn't make the cut. He's been doing it for like twenty years. So why doesn't he have like? Is he older guy? Why doesn't he have like anything at all online? Yeah, I don't think he's that old i mean i i honestly didn't ask um i didn't i did talk to him for a bit his name is joe and it seems that 2022 was his last year doing the walkthrough haunt he'll probably still put up some yard decorations um he says he might go pro 
Uh, but uh, my best guess is that he was attracting well enough attention without marketing himself at all. Mm-hmm. There's a good amount of nice home displays in, in Tewksbury too, so maybe the word just got around enough because everyone in that area loves Halloween so much. Right. You know, but there's another guy like I was talking about. It's like, do you want to become more popular than you are? It looks like this guy doesn't want any of that. Yeah. So he was doing fine. So why isn't he doing the walkthrough anymore after this year? Uh, well, he says it's because of the damage that the kids do when they walk through the place. But I mean, um, you know, I'm a wide guy, and I tell you, there was no way in hell I couldn't bump into props. Yeah. You know, th- there were times I felt like I was literally crawling through them. <laughs> okay. He even had a sign out in the front of his house with all the rules. And it seems like a good chunk of them were for the people that might cause damage. It's like, <laughs> it's like a you know, max amount of people at a time is three. You can't carry your kid. Under 12 must be accompanied by a 21 plus adult. Yeah. And if you're a, it, literally, if you're a toucher or a runner, you can't enter. <laughs> you know, obviously I'm not trying to break anything and I and I didn't thankfully but I could see some kids pushing things around a little bit it's it's a shame but it'd be cool to see him do a pro hunt that was a really really cool one and even then Joe was telling me about two other home haunts in the area that I haven't seen on any list anywhere and one was a one of those projection mapped houses where they made their own video and projected it you know you ever see those things um yeah, I think I see some people have them for like Christmas theme too, right? Is that what you're talking about? Right. It, yeah, it's more like a like an animated video that plays with the house. It's not just like a projection of like Halloween shapes floating. Yeah. You know, it's like an actual show. Right. Um, I have yet to see one in person, but damn, those things can get really creative. And another house that was down the road with a, a whole cluster of decorations. Uh, a lot of them were handmade, so that's cool too. A lot of pro hunts I talk to, they don't really get a chance to go see each other, but they support each other. And the way that they talk about each other's haunts, it's like, oh yeah, I hear they're doing really good stuff. Uh, really good. Got a lot of stuff. Yeah, I haven't been there, but it, it looks great. And and what I'm really looking for is Oh, yeah, you got to check out these guys. They got big gargoyle things that breathe fire, and they have a clown tent with acrobats and contortionists, and oh, oh, and they make these fresh baked pumpkin chocolate chip cookies, and, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> and, and that's the kind of attitude I'm getting from these home haunters talking about other home haunters. Right. It's, it's kind of weird. It's like they're all in their own little thing. Maybe because they're like smaller and it's kind of like a more of a family type thing because they know how it is, you know, with a home haunt. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, they are all different, but I just feel like they're a lot more friendly and outgoing with each other. I mean, obviously, pro haunters have a lot more on their mind, right? Right. But it'd be cool to see pro haunters, you know, get really excited about other people's places like that. The other home haunt that I went to was called the Redfield Circle of Terror. And this is in Derry, New Hampshire. It's put on by Wayne Morell of Wayne's Tattoo World. Uh, really cool setup. They also made their way onto the top five viewers choice awards and uh, uh, for best haunts in New Hampshire. A bit different from the other home haunts because he lives in a much more spread out neighborhood. So I had a different vibe before I even saw the place just because of the location. But he had a bit of a, a, a different approach or vision. Um, it was very much more like a like a like a walk around his junk kind of vibe. <laughs> walk around his junk. All right, calm down, perv. Okay. <laughs> this was creepier. Uh, the vast majority of the home haunts tend to play with the theme of Halloween decor. You know, just like fun, elaborate displays of just Halloween stuff. And this place had an okay amount of that, but still, it it was like a darkness swooped in one day and slaughtered all of the decorations. You know, right? You know know what it was? It's a home haunt designed and run by a tattoo artist who's also 
a medieval geek and probably isn't a devil worshiper officially, <laughs> but he wouldn't mind being called one. <laughs> all right, all right. And I just made a huge assumption right there. So if I'm super wrong, I apologize. You I'm dick. just saying, <laughs> just just saying that that's what it sort of felt like. So what made you think he was a devil worshiper? Okay, I'll get into why I say that in a bit. But um, this is kind of what I'm talking about when I say there should be a New England-based podcast for haunts, because I think. Most people in New England, at least the ones wanting to listen to a Haunted Attraction podcast, will understand what I mean when I say someone who isn't a devil worshiper, but doesn't mind being called one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, other, other parts of the country, even haunters, they'll have a very different take on the whole thing. And I know that's generalizing a lot. I'm just saying I hope and I think that uh, when, when I say someone over here might not mind being called a devil worshiper, that most people would imagine someone who uh, likes, likes cosplay with the theme of the dark underworld stuff. Right. Nothing more. You know? Is that better? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes more sense? Okay, cool. So that being said, the Redfield Circle of Terror... They, they aren't going to touch you or hurt you or try to scare you too bad, but there's a good chance that someone might be playing with, like, a little Renaissance Fair battle hatchet. You know? okay. <laughs> like real metal. You know, they, they, they were auctioning off a drinking horn, for crying out loud. Nice. <laughs> the entrance into this guy's driveway has two dragons on either side sticking their heads up like they're shooting fire into the sky. And it's a torch coming out of both of their mouths. Wow. And that's what he has for lights out there to show where his house is. The haunt itself doesn't really have anything to do with medieval stuff. But the facade he built around his house is this big dark castle. Right. You know, they, they don't shy away from painting pentagrams on their face or upside down crosses. You know, he's got a fire pit going with the big red rope line. Uh, Pentagon on the uh, on the ground, mm -hmm. and this is why I said devil worship. You know, it's uh, it's not that I have anything really against that. It's just that it felt very, I don't know, kind of immature, I guess. Okay, well, why? Well, like to me, it's like if you're going to use symbols like that, you know, pentagrams, upside down cross, you know, make the theme about that. Don't just throw it in there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's just a personal preference thing, I guess, because because the walkthrough of this place was great, but but it was still like that random mishmash of junky stuff with old Halloween decorations type haunt, which is something I actually enjoy a lot. It's really creepy. And it kind of reminds me of like House of a Thousand Corpses feel. Yeah, like if you're gonna have like pentagrams and like devil worship stuff. I mean, you, I guess you could tie tie that in with anything. Yeah. Like clowns, but they're like devil worshiping like Satan clowns or something. But right. Like yeah, I get what you're saying though, but And it was like that for for the whole thing, just a bunch of weird creepy stuff, but then all of a sudden pentagram. And I don't know. It, it's 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 not that I find it offensive or anything like that. It's just that I feel it doesn't match. That's right. that's exactly what it is. Like, to me, it represents something a lot deeper than whatever is happening here. You know, technically, it wasn't even a pentagram on the ground, actually. It was just a five-point star. But still, it, it was more that it just encompassed this feeling of this attitude the place was giving off. Everywhere else felt like it was for the community and anyone could enjoy it. You know, not that this place didn't have that, but there was something a bit more like intimidating for all the wrong reasons I guess mm -hmm. like um, like the type of place that would almost encourage people to drink and smoke and lime <laughs> not that they do but it felt like the kind of place that would right. <laughs> you know? so was there people smoking and drinking in line definitely drinking they poured all of their stuff into thermoses right. uh, smoking they were decent enough to walk away but they didn't go too far and the group that I had to put up with for the whole half hour I was waiting was this bunch of uh, middle-aged moms with all these sorts of daddy issues I bet <laughs> 
they were acting like this was a goddamn bachelorette party for some reason. Maybe it was. I don't know. Uh, they were wearing these stupid plastic hair band things with the little lights going off them, screaming "woo" the whole time for <laughs> no reason. You know, they were driven to this place on this flatbed trailer thing, and it was all decorated with Halloween cheap crap. You know, hauled by a tractor going two miles an hour, <laughs> and, and one of them brought their own lawn chair to sit in while she waited in line. <laughs> So every time the line moved, she had to get out of the damn thing, pick it up, move three feet forward, (laughs) put it down. It was annoying as hell. (laughs) And then there was this uh, queue line actor, actually two of them. One was a little girl who would walk up to people and just stare at them. It didn't work on anybody, and she, she didn't switch it up. It was just this little girl, just some family friend, just doing stuff, I know. Um... But this other guy was in a trench coat and a leather hat, long beard, just kept going up and down the line the whole time, just going, Hey! What are you doing? Hey! What do you want? It was a hell of a lot more entertaining than the kid, but he just wouldn't stop. There was no breaks. The kid kept going, too. I guess there's something admirable about that, you know, especially since it was just a home haunt. Um but I found it a bit annoying after a few minutes. No, like going back to like the pentagram and like the devil worshiping stuff. That there's people like that in the real world, so that I think that actually would be a cool theme if someone did that because like it's a home haunt, so it's a little more personal. Hmm. Like if someone did a full theme like that, like you were saying, like you were hoping the whole theme of the haunt would be like that if they're going to use that stuff. Are we talking real Satanists? Yes. Uh... <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, that could also, like, are these people, like, actually, like, devil worshippers? Just to make it a little more realistic, more, more scary and stuff, you people well, could have I that mean, thought, Yeah, there, there's know? the theme of devil worship. There's the theme of, you know, using the pentagram and satanic rituals and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I've been in... Things like that. It would be cool if a home haunt wanted to do that, be a little bit more, you know, dark like that. Sure. But when you say, no, real Satanists aren't like that. (laughs) No, I know. But the. the, Not not that I'm a Satanist or anything like that, but I mean, they get a bad rap. I'll I'll say that. (laughs) They they really do. There's there's a church of Satan in in Salem, you know? Nobody's freaking saying anything about anything of them. They're just. (laughs) They're just weirdos living their life, you know? <laughs> no, but I was just going through in my head, like, what if that actually was, like, a... That actually happened in real life, like, this group of, like... It's more of, like, a movie oh, story. Oh, like if, uh... Okay, yeah. Like, this group kind of, of Satanists, like, devil worshippers, like, created this haunt and, like, all this shit. Like, oh, this stuff looks real. Like, it's all this stuff that they actually have. <laughs> But it's actually a real, like, devil worship, like, group, and they made this home haunt, and, like, people go through, and, like, they start disappearing and shit. Yeah, like, if it was, <laughs> uh, like, a movie, yeah, that would be a And then one movie. of the, and then, like, the main guy in the movie, like, goes into this room, and he's not supposed to, and it's, like, all these, like, bodies hanging. He's like, this shit looks real. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> know. God. It's just a random thought, yeah. Well, That's something no, like that No, no, that happened. would be cool. That would, but but you bring up an interesting point though. Like, well, not really that interesting. So I'll just <laughs> keep on going. <laughs> no, but what if there was a haunt that was actually put on by Satanists? Yeah, I there I can't imagine that hasn't already happened. <laughs> Maybe somewhere. it's happened and no one knows about it. Yeah, it's just like I said. The Satanists get a bad rap, you know. <laughs> they uh. They're not evil, <laughs> you know, so they could have put on like some kind of like a fundraiser thing, you know, Yeah. but, uh, I mean, shit, the Christians freaking already did, you know, their version of it. Actually, a lot of the haunts started in churches, no. <laughs> you know, and then they made the things called hell houses where they pretty much turned the whole thing into a preach, mm-hmm. you know, you walk through, well, we'll talk about hell, ha- well, that's hell enough, houses that's another episode. Yeah. But I'm just saying... I never thought about the other way. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. I'm going to put that in my notes. All right. So, finally, I headed into this uh, 
Redfield Circle attraction. Already impressed they have a laser tunnel at a freaking home haunt. Awesome. It seems like the whole first portion of this haunt is underneath their house. They have like a deck or a screen and porch or something. And this is where it felt most like this old Halloween decor mixed with rusty junk theme. You know, body parts and old fridges, pictures, frames, and orange string lights, trash bags and tarp walls, that kind of stuff. You know, good good sets for a home haunt. Good amount of volunteer actors doing the best they can. Good job. They had this little shed out in the back that you could walk into. And I don't know if it's an actual tattoo booth or tattoo parlor. Sure as hell looked like it. Or if it was just for the haunt. But, um, but that was the first time I've seen a haunt use a tattoo artist and a victim in the chair as, as a scare. And I thought it was awesome. That's unique. It turns out, though, ain't this hilarious. Barrett's Haunted Mansion, which I didn't go to in 2022... Uh, I heard they completely redid their outdoor haunt, and wouldn't you freaking know it, they have a tattoo parlor scene. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yep. But Redfield gets the first credit for it because they are tattoo people, so it's been there for a while. <laughs> so how long have they been doing it? Uh, 2017, I think, was their first year. And the walkthrough went into the woods a little bit. And I heard people in the line that had been there before talking about how much they liked the mattress in the ground. And I'm thinking, oh, it's just a squishy floor. I've been over a bunch of those. Oh, I bet you have. <sighs> <laughs> well, this wasn't a squishy floor. Uh, this was a legit, super bouncy, old, old twin mattress covered in leaves at the bottom of a decline. <laughs> so, so you're kind of speed walking into this thing like a damn trap. <laughs> that was dangerous, but these, but these drunk ladies loved it, apparently. The squishy floor that are made up of uh, in pro haunts, those feel more like a, like, like a slab of thick rubber wrapped over a sheet of plywood with big chunks of meat and a bunch of oil in between. That's exactly what it feels like. This was like stepping on a bunch of cartoon springs. I miraculously didn't faceplant myself, but I stopped for a second like I was in an active minefield. Like, <laughs> okay. uh, Actors are all over the place, each one doing their own thing. No real theming here, that's fine. The path leads back to the front of the house and then out into the street. Bunch of random sets, bunch of random characters, that five-point star thing, a little fire pit. I, I don't really have much else to say about it. It was good. Um, just a very different vibe from the other home haunts, which I guess is a real good thing, too. You know, have some diversity in this. Were they free? Yes, but they take donations for the local food bank. Um mm -hmm. And you can also bring non-perishables. Uh, they donate quite a bit for a little Halloween thing in the middle of nowhere. I'm impressed. Would you say that most home haunts are for charity? I'd say so. Um, if, if not because they just want to be a fundraiser for something, uh, some of them might be forced into it. I don't know all the legalities of it, but I know you have to set up an actual business in order to charge people. And you have to get much more strict certificates in order to charge people to walk through your own attraction. And those cost money. Yeah. You know, uh, regulated equipment and fire control stuff all costs money. I'm not sure if home haunts don't have to follow these rules. I'm not sure. But I do know it's a hell of a lot easier. And the town usually feels better about you if you just accept donations for a local something yeah you know so that's pretty much all i can think of to say about the home haunts i went to in 2022 why don't we take a break and listen to another edited down number okay haunted by ross buck
Ah, uh, beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Bugden. Uh, want to check out more of Ross Bugden's music? You can find him on YouTube at Ross Bugden. There you go. And we're back. Going to start wrapping things up here as far as the haunt community is going. Uh, I've noticed a couple more trends getting more popular. One of them is haunts are doing a lot more warnings on the customer service side. In particular, posting messages and stuff deliberately saying the busier days are going to be Friday and Saturday, especially a week or two before Halloween. So we don't want to hear any of you whining when you're standing in line for five hours. But if you come on Thursday or Sunday, it probably won't be that bad. Are they really saying that, though? No, but they're just telling people to come on less busier nights. <laughs> I feel like that's obvious, but... Well, you would think so, but they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's like... Um... Like, I came on a Saturday, I was expecting it to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think. Um, so, it, it, it's like they have to be freaking parents, too. You know, they have to flat out say, it's it's a bit wet out there. Please wear shoes. Please yeah. wear warm clothes. And they say that. They definitely say that. It's going to be wet, so put on proper footwear, for crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen the drama when it comes to this, but I feel like since they're posting stuff like that, there must be a ridiculous amount of stupid people who show up on a muddy, cold night wearing Crocs. <laughs> And complaining about it like it's the haunt's fault for why mud exists. Yeah, you know? <laughs> not hard to believe. It's just embarrassing. Now, are you talking about home haunts, or is this just haunts in general? Just haunts in general, oh, okay. yeah. And also, a, a lot more of these daytime hours, these family-friendly nights, kids' days, the no-scares, lights-on shows, whatever you want to call them. It seemed like everyone was doing something along those lines at some point. And it's awesome. You know, I got to take my one-year-old baby to Haunted Overload. It was freaking awesome. It hit different in 2022. I always knew that these little no-scare lights on events would be good. But now I'm really thinking about it. And it's like, you know, parents want to check out these places too. Mm -hmm. And the kids are too young to do the real thing. Perfect happy medium for both. Right. You know, and also, like... Pretend there's a haunt owner sitting at their desk in the middle of the day. Right-hand man comes in. Hey, there's people out there and they want to check it out right now. Uh, but we aren't open right now. No, no, no. They, they don't want all the actors and stuff. Just just flick on the lights. Let them walk through. But, but I have to get the fog and the music. No, no. They don't care about that stuff. Just charge them ten bucks and let them walk through. But... But it's not scary right now. God damn it, Otis! <laughs> <laughs> Just take the damn money and flick on the regular lights. Boom, money. So do uh, these daytime family things, a lot of them charge? Most of them charge for this? Charge, yeah, charge something. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit of money. It's, But I mean, it's better than freaking not having that money at all. Yeah. You know? And obviously, I'm not trying to say that this might replace regular haunts, but there is a steady population out there of people with kids who like this stuff, but not enough to risk the kids' bedtime. Yeah. Or their own, you know? Jesus, everybody's busier. It's not that hard to think that maybe there's people out there who have zero interest in, in wasting three hours of their night standing in line with a bunch of annoying trash, <laughs> you know? Wow. <laughs> you really don't like people, huh? Hate people. People suck. Sucky people hate them. You know why I hate them? Because they suck. I like haunters, though. Most of them. They hate people, too. Because they suck. But yeah, almost everywhere had at least one day for their no-scare, lights-on, daytime stuff. It sounds like a cool thing for other uh, haunters from other places to go check out like during the day. Because they're, you know, they're all working at night. Yeah, true. Um... It's funny you mentioned that, actually. Uh, for the past 12 years now, Barrett's Haunted Mansion in Abington, Mass., has been uh, doing a lights-on tour on select dates, uh, usually in the early afternoon on Saturdays during the season. And there's a good amount of haunters that go to that one. You know, Barrett, Barrett's is one of the most detailed haunts in New England. Amazing job they do with that place every year. Um, but the tour is also their behind-the-scenes stuff, too. 
So they got their costume trailers, the security monitors, you know, where the actors hide, all stuff like that. All stuff that haunters would really want to check out and look at. Nice. Does that do any <laughs> other haunts offer stuff like that? Um not that I remember, but I think the majority of haunt owners love showing off their operation to other people. A lot of owners that I've talked to are like, oh, come over anytime. You know, Barrett's is a little bit different. They're also managing a restaurant and got a million and one things going on all the time. They're just crazy. That's good, though. At least they're offering something, I guess. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to check it out one of these years. Looks like uh, this year, 2023, they're part of the Legendary Haunt Tour. So I'll get to see that stuff anyway in November. What's the Legendary Haunt Tour? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar, which I'm sure is not a lot of you, the Legendary Haunt Tour is an annual destination trip that allows haunters from around the country to check out all of these big name attractions. Uh, this year's trip coming up here, they'll be checking out Salem because dumb <laughs> and going to Haunted Overload, Fright Kingdom, and Barrett's. Cool. So they go to like a different area every year? Yeah, last year they went to Nashville. Yeah, and they had like four stops, you know, two a night. Um, they came up here in 2014, and I got to check it out. We went to Spooky World, Fright Kingdom, and Haunted Overload. Uh, Spooky World got freaking... I'll never forget it, because Spooky World got a freaking lobster dinner catering for everyone. Oh, my gosh. And Fright Kingdom got a nice barbecue chicken dinner. I wish I went last year. They had, like world-famous barbecue spots and hot chicken spots in Nashville. Damn. Uh, so the food's, like, included? Like, they get stuff from the area that they're in? The food's included. That might have been the first year they did it. I'm not sure. But um, I haven't paid close enough attention to to what they were serving every year. It's usually the first haunt of the night that provides catering. Mm -hmm. And I'm imagining it's up to them and the people hope they just do something special like that but i think they have spooky world to thank for that N new england lobster bake <laughs> did i say it was a bake mussels clam chowder wow. with the potatoes and corn it was it was really something special for all those people who live out in the middle of the country mm -hmm. and don't get to try that much seafood but i don't know if haunts on the tour have made it a tradition or not to try to make it like foods from their area that's also a good so. thing, like, to showcase that food in the area, like, hey, to, like, maybe entice people to come back, like, wow, that, oh, yeah, you know, that sure. New England, yeah. like, we had a good, haunts were great, but also the food was really good, too, you know. We have some of the best food. I gotta say, California's got some pretty damn good food options over there, too, so. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then you freaking make a food review channel, and you go to Taco Bell every time they come up with some <laughs> freaking stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they told that the, the good thing about out here is with a lot of the fast food places like test items out here. That's why I was going doing. Oh, really? The, okay, I didn't know that. you know it's LA. It's a big market, so that's what I was doing when I went. Sometimes when I went to. The <laughs> hey, man, stop! <laughs> no, I'm just my a... food reviews are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Noobs literally goes to a place, sits in his car, and takes a video of himself eating the thing, and then goes, it's pretty good. And that's the end of the review. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, and uh, some more stuff uh, from last year. So a really good year for first year haunts. It was a really good year because of all the, the haunts that decided to finally come back since the pandemic, too. And uh, and when I started looking to see who might be opening back up, I find all these brand new ones. Thinking to myself, like, what the hell? What's going on this year? You know, Rhode Island now has the Haunted Gallows. Connecticut's got Haunting on the Ridge and the Forsaken Lands. 13th World Fright Park in Massachusetts. Duke's Spook House in New Hampshire. Fright at the Fort came back in Maine. You'll hear about all these guys in my upcoming podcast. But yeah, I, I I don't exactly know what to make of it. Haunt's just popping up like crazy around here. 
I don't know about everywhere else, but it feels universal. You look at some of these other countries and see how like five years ago they might have had one haunted attraction. And now there's like more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Very good analysis. You're welcome. Now you said universally. Yeah. So that means on other planets there's hot on spot. No, dude. <laughs> oh wait, do you, do you think there are haunts, you know, on other planets in the universe? In the sense that if an astronaut went to Mars and then walked into a cave, he had no idea what the hell was in there. Yeah, I guess that's technically a haunt. Oh. <laughs> so there you go. Damn. So that's what I took away from 2022. A lot of great things happening with the home haunt scene. Some not so great. Uh, a lot of people wanting to see more haunts during the day or in a different way. Um, everything is just going up for the haunt community. Now, I just got to hope that it's the right kind of up, really. So, like I said, I'll be trying to pump out these episodes as often as possible. You can find them here on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Facebook. Not sure what other sources I'm going to be using, but I'll let you know as soon as I do. I'd like to thank uh, Noobs for joining me today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Woosh. Thank you for having me. What did you learn? Um... Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I didn't mean to. Yeah, it's something I said, so go ahead. <laughs> no, just um, it's nice to hear the uh, home haunt industry is uh, ramping up uh, out there, um, out here. It's a legit industry now. Yeah. It's not just, you know, people doing home haunts. It's like, it's like recognized as its own thing. Right. Like, they have their own type of insurances and things like that. It's it's really crazy. And it's not just, like, there's people... These people are passionate. Like, it's not just, oh, put a couple things in the backyard and mm-hmm. walk through. It's, like, they got, you know, the guys you said has, like, storage containers and stuff. So, it's... Yeah. People are That's actually... Crazy. Uh, passionate about this stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next episode is number two, my trip to 13th World Fright Park in Palmer, Massachusetts, to check out their first year attraction. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your day, night, week, month, and even your year. year, (laughs) Uh, Thanks for listening. Let's party! (laughs) Woo!